on episode two of Ball State Baseball Believe. Learn about our teammates Sean Kennedy and Jarrett Reinflesh and their past to Ball State. Get a behind the scenes look at our pitching staff. Go inside the dugout on game day and meet senior utility player EJ Davari. Ball State Baseball Believe starts now. If you don't believe in yourself, you're done. If you don't believe in your teammates, you're done. If you don't believe in your coaches, you're done. You gotta root for your brother. You gotta believe. As spring unfolds, the team enjoys getting outside to prepare for our last non-conference series of the season against the Dayton Flyers. After a slow start to game one, EJ Davari's late game heroics lifted us to a 9-6 win. The momentum carried over to the doubleheader the next day. giving us two more wins and the series sweep. For one teammate in particular, the Dayton trip was a chance to play in front of his hometown. He just started playing at a young age and always was usually the best athlete on the field. Nice catch, Sean! He's light on his feet, he's fun to be around. He's just that teammate that every team really needs. I don't really think there is a specific point where I became Sean Kennedy. I think it was a lot of different places. And I think a lot of it would be Little League fields that I played in when I was younger, because that's really where I started to develop my game. It was a very close-knit community, and he always played on baseball teams, and everybody supported everybody on the baseball team. He continually worked at it, and I just continually um, reiterated the fact that you gotta have a positive attitude, keep working at it, have the desire to get better, and he just kept getting better. Woo! From the Springboro Destroyers, Sean Kennedy. My dad is my best friend. He was a great life teacher in general, able to implement life lessons from a young age, which also could help me in baseball too. I always taught him to be a coachable and teachable kid and to play the game for the love of the game and always respect the game. There's nothing I wouldn't do for him. He's taught me so much about life and sports and the game that I love and baseball. I definitely don't think I'd be half the man I am today without him in my life. I would definitely say I'm a dirt bag. I love to get dirty. I love diving all over the place. I'm not afraid to take one in the chest, block one up at third base, uh, stick my nose in there. I love it. I definitely didn't know 
that I was going to have that much success. I knew that if I worked hard and I stayed the course, as Coach Maloney would say, that I could definitely make an impact on the team, but how great of an impact I wasn't really sure yet. Sean Kennedy's a gritty player with a really good glove and a very consistent contact hitter. I knew when I saw him play, I said that, you know, I think he plays the game the right way and I think with continued strength training, he would get stronger and that it would increase his bat speed and his arm strength and boy, it sure has and, you know, he's been a heck of a player for us. It's always nice when you have uh, guys coming onto your team that already have previous friendships. It makes the adjustment to come into a new college, um, you know, easier. You know, when you have a close-knit friendship, um, you support one another and I think that's what they do. We played summer baseball together when I was, I think we were 15. It was my sophomore summer going into my junior year. Uh, we played for the same summer ball team called the Ohio Heat. I think I do a great job of equaling his personality. We have very opposite personalities. He's very fierce, he likes to lead with his words, he's not afraid to get in people's faces. As for me, I don't, I'm not very a, a vocal leader, I like to lead by uh, example. There's definitely times where uh, I should lead um, using my words and he's able to kind of kick me in the butt and get me going that way. He helped me with making this great decision, coming to Ball State, which I can say is probably the best decision that I've made in my life. I wasn't going to come here and he kind of talked me into it and he was like, come on man, you got to go visit. Like They really like you. I know you'll love the school. I'm kind of a Hard-nosed guy. I like to get, get stuff done. I'm not really patient with how it's going to get done. And uh, Sean tends to be, um, he tends to be more friendly than I am to people. Now, I'm kind of just like, this is how it has to get done, and more face-to-face. -face. Uh, he's extremely caring. He's always there for you, dude. Um, he's, he's like a gentle giant. But he definitely knows when to turn it on on the field and become that fierce competitor, and I think that's awesome about him. It definitely comes with a lot of expectations this year, and um, we know what we have to achieve and what's expected of us, and we're just kind of go out. And also, we're going to try to teach the freshmen what um, the seniors were able to teach us last year. I think that's what really helped us to succeed last year, is what the, the seniors taught us. And I hope that we're able to make the impact on the freshmen now that they were able to make on us last year. The leadership of the veteran players was evident as we opened the Mid-American Conference season at Bowling Green. Zach Plesak, who earned Mac West Pitcher of the Week, and Scott Baker showed their ability on the mound by throwing back-to-back -back complete games. This weekend was the first weekend where we actually pitched well, hit well, and fielded well. It was nice to put it all together in the first conference weekend. Well, anytime you sweep anybody is a big deal. Um, it's hard to sweep, period. Um, but the sweep in a, to open up the conference season is huge. I mean, if you look at all the games that were played, and we we're the only team that swept that first weekend, um, that's how difficult it is. And I told the boys, um, after we had won two games, um, basically what happens, if you win two out of three and you win the series, you're going to be in the hunt. But when you start sweeping people is when you got a chance to be a champion. We were coming to form, and we swept for the second straight weekend. Our pitching staff played a key role in the sweep at Bowling Green. Their success is no accident. You know, we had two very experienced pitchers in Scott Baker and Zach Plezak, and quite frankly, they struggled, and they really hit the full cylinder at the right time. But before that, it's been an up and down for both of them. They've had a few good outings, but then there were several outings they weren't so good. Because of some of the uh, short outings that they had, it gave opportunity to some of these other kids. Well, you know, it's, they're still mature and they're still growing. You know, there's never, it's never a finished project, whether they're freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. You're always working, always trying to get your stuff better. I have to lead. I gotta, and I'm not used to that. I'm not a micromanager, so I, I mean, I have to be with these freshmen because I don't have a lot of upperclassmen to lead them. Uh, Scott Baker does a good job behind the scenes, but he's not a vocal guy. I gotta be the talker. I gotta be the one getting in their rear ends when someone needs to get in their rear ends so there's no one else doing it. You know, the big part is developing that relationship with those guys so you can't be the jerk sometimes. And they still respect you, you know, so. And I think they're, they're learning and I think they're picking it up real nice. And, you know, it's all about, like I said, even, even just relationship-wise, it's about those 16 pitchers and 
each one I have a different relationship with, and that's how it has to be. They've come a long way since the fall, just learning what works at the college level, what doesn't work at the college level. And, you know, them seeing 20 games in now has helped them a ton. Not even, not even them being on the mound 20 games, you know, whatever, five, six times on the mound with Bernsey, whatever it's been, he's been able to watch 20 Division I college baseball games. So that's important, is them learning to watch the games more than anything else and learning from Plezak and Baker's successes and their failures. That's what really allowed us to get off to the start that we have is um, we had superlative uh, relief pitching. Brendan Burns' performance, Devin Wilburn's performance, B.J. Butler's rise to be a closer has been phenomenal. I would say the main thing is confidence. Uh, last year, as a freshman, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, got my feet wet a little bit. Um, I think I threw about 15 innings last year, and then over the summer, I was able to work really hard and into the fall. And then this spring, I came with a lot of confidence um, and was just, just able to pitch and pitch well. I remember the first time he ever pitched as a freshman. He actually pitched a great game of four or five innings and didn't give up anything. Um, but then his comment was, man, I threw too many change-ups. Well, you just went five innings or something, didn't give up a run, and you're, you know, you're already thinking. So in other words, in his mind, his thought process was, you know, I want to throw that fastball but that's not pitching. When you're throwing 84, 87 miles an hour, pitching is changing speeds, locating, having command, mixing your pitches, and uh, he has a special uh, pitch. He has a changeup that really drops. You don't see it much. It's called maturity, would be the reason that he's having success. I think he understands his strengths and his weaknesses, and he's playing to his strengths, and he's doing a great, great job. Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is, like anybody, you know, he's a young man that wants to play football someday, but he knows Avilo has to go up. So you just got to gotta go 50-50 with it. You know, we're definitely working on that velocity, doing a little bit of, you know, some weighted ball and pushing that envelope a little bit with some long toss. But at the end of the day, it's where he's at now. It's not where he's going to be. So where he's at now is the pitchability. So a lot of his bullpens are a lot of off-speed, command, two balls on the plate, two balls off the plate. So we got a constantly movement is, is his key, is movement, because he has feel and he has that pitchability. Now he's just getting in rhythm. We do a series of drills. Each guy selects the drills they want to do to get in rhythm, to get the body and arm in sync. So that's what he's doing now. Then we'll start into whatever he wants to do today. It's kind of on him today. I start with crossover and then uh, step behind drill and then like a narrow stance drill just to work on like my balance and like getting through the mound, making sure everything is working well. Get into the ground. Get into the ground. Use the ground. Yeah. Feel a difference there? A little bit more stable? A lot more stable, man. Now you can have better command. We always get in our own way. We all do in life, baseball, whatever you talk about, you always get in your own way sometimes. And that's one thing he's not doing. He knows who he is and he knows what he's capable of doing. He's going to go out and execute it. Nothing more, nothing less. And when guys do that, they're going to have success. Nice. I think when you go on side, you're blocking your, you're blocking your backside a little bit. You're getting too far that way. Okay. All right, so free up that arm a little bit. Do what you want to do it. Stay straight with the body. Don't try to go to the inner half of it. Does that make sense? Let your movement take you there. That makes sense. Cutting yourself off, so now it's what? It's up and it's floating a little bit, right? When I'm going glove side, I'm almost like going off the plate. Yep. And so it should be down the middle for arm side. Yep, clean up the body so the arm can work, right? Keep it in line. I definitely don't throw very hard. Um, I'm more in the 80s, and so I have to throw three pitches for strikes, um, and it's more about location. Um, if I throw a fastball, it's got to be on the outer two, like outer third of the plate, rather than over the plate. Um, if I make a mistake, it's going to be hit more often, so I got to mix up those pitches. Try to throw a little bit firmer, just a hair, just a hair firmer. He has that special changeup. That's a swing and miss. Slider is getting better and better each week. It's not a swing and miss yet, but he's showing signs of it being that. So you get that second swing and miss along with that sinker that he's throwing, it's, it's, he's keeping hitters off balance. I started throwing in my changeup when I was 12, um, so that's a pitch I've been working on for eight plus years. Um, 
it wasn't very good at the start. Um, I threw it throughout middle school, high school, into college, and I'd say that's definitely my best pitch now. That middle finger, right, to make that knuckle pop. Ooh, that was nice. To get it down, that sink will show up. That was just up, so it was flat. There's something new every day, and it, it, it keeps me on my toes. It keeps me on my toes because I always got to make sure that they understand not only not only what we're doing, but why we're doing things. And that's that's probably the biggest challenge. But it's a fun challenge too because you're they're raw on the mind still. So like I was just starting it here, and then it was ending it here, but they're still swinging at it, and that's where a lot of the ones they're popping into the ground. I'm good. Just keep it rolling, dude. Good job. A key to a successful team is the ability to win its midweek games. We played two big games to make a statement against the Big Ten. The first ever matchup with Rutgers ended with a 6-2 victory for us. Another key game was against in-state rival Purdue. Ryan Spaulding and Matt Eppers both hit home runs to ignite an 8-2 win versus the Boilermakers. Let's go! Not only are the players on the field important to the success of our team, but also our brothers in the dugout. Superstitions and pregame rituals are abundant in baseball. Our team is no different. I think it's just part of the game, a part of the culture of baseball. Um, if you look even at major league teams, whether it's after a home run or just getting ready for a game, there's a lot of pregame rituals that uh, players go through. And a lot of times it's handshakes, and you want to go through the same thing, almost like to have good karma. And so uh, a lot of times that's the way we go about it, just to have fun, keep the game fun, keep a lot of energy up, and keep the crowd going. <laughs> I want to say probably about 80% of the team. Uh, I even have one with Coach Link. So uh, I try and get them with everybody just with my relationships and things that go on just to keep things going. I think it's just my personality. Uh, I'm a loud person. Uh, I like screaming, like yelling, like every, getting everybody hyped and excited. One of the things that we do in the dugout, um, every time somebody strikes someone out, we all yell, rat, rat, rat. And that's, that's kind of just a symbol of uh, he's a rat on the mound. He's somebody who's going to grind, be dirty, and but in a good connotation, in a good way, that he's going to do his best to get that guy out. And that's almost like a reward for him to hear that chant from the dugout. Are you ready? Pop, lock, and drop it. Oh, that was on me. <laughs> he's nervous. <laughs> he's nervous doing the handshake. Here you go. Pop, lock, and drop it. If you're hitting or you're pitching and you hear your team behind you, like, I mean, I know when I'm out there that I, I love hearing, I love hearing our guys in the game. And, I mean, baseball is not the most, like, high-paced sport. And so just, like, the little things that we're able to do, it really keeps us, like, into the games. Okay, it's so, like, when it's ones, like, ones across the board, one strike, one ball, one out. Um, we all hop up on, hop up on the, the dugout here, and, like, rattle our fingers on, on the pad and see how loud we can try to get it. Um, we've got twos, which is all twos on the same thing. It's like... We rub, and then as soon as the pitcher like comes up, as soon as he gets into his motion, we like shake it out like we're begging for a pitch. And last weekend, actually, we were like nine for nine on all two twos. It went to three two every time. When we're on defense and we have twos, well, um, someone just you know bait them up, boys. Uh, we all go fishing. So what you'll look and see in the dugout, we all put a, a bait on the hook. And then so we'll all, we'll all act like we're fishing. We'll, we'll start just pulling down our bait and whatnot. And then as soon as our pitcher starts in the windup, we'll cast out. And then as soon as the pitch, <laughs> and that one, hey, that one's tricky. That one, that one gets a lot of people. First pitch strike. First pitch strike, yeah. That's, that's my favorite one. Yeah. We, we added a little strike call to it this weekend, too. <laughs> Okay, I messed that one up. David, da that's because of David. That's because of David. <sighs> Clearly, it doesn't affect the actual play, but um, it's just a mojo thing. Keeps everybody in the dugout locked into the game and ready to play. Well, I think you want to. Everybody wants to be loose, and the other thing is they want to. They're a team. 
I mean, that's the thing we preach the most is it's not about any individual, it's really about the team. And so however you can help the team win, that's what it's about. And so uh, these little uh, things that they do, that's all their team binding. And it's all theirs. It has nothing to do with the coaching staff. It's, uh, we're family here, and that's how we try to create an atmosphere that's family. And uh, they bought in, and they find their own quirks, and, and they go with it. And it's fun because it keeps them all loose, and they, they have fun with it. I, I think it just keeps it a kid's game. It keeps it a lot of fun, uh, a lot of energy, like I said. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way, one of the best ways to keep the game fun. You're nice and relaxed, you're not going to be nervous because you know you're doing something fun with your friends. So that's what keeps the game a game and not anything uptight. Everybody was able to contribute in our second conference series of the year. We had to battle the Buffalo Bulls along with freezing temperatures and windy weather. It wasn't pretty, but we captured our 15th consecutive series win in MAC play. Jarrett Reinflesch sparked an offensive explosion in Game 3, with four hits including a grand slam. Davari added two hits and two RBI in the series finale. His presence in our lineup has been a pleasant surprise and felt all season long. Ball State, um, it, I just, as I saw it, it was like, I wanted to get away from my house. Like, I needed to grow up and like, I needed to turn into a man. So, like, I, I knew if I stayed home and, like, close to home, I would have my mom to back up. I would have my dad to back me up. But now that I'm over here, I'm just with my guys and I'll, like, all by myself, I think it just helped me a lot and it's going to help me in the future. EJ can play a lot of different positions for us and that's huge. And um, we're, you know, you need to have a utility guy that can play a lot of, you know, fill in a lot of roles. That really helps your team. Honestly, I, I just wanted to play. I, no matter where, outfield, infield, catcher. Yeah, I even told coach I could pitch, but he never believed in me on that one. <laughs> But I don't, I don't really care. I just want to play and win for the team. He's having a phenomenal year. Matter of fact, at this point, you'd have to say he'd be the MVP of the team. Um, and to say where he was two years ago when I first got the job, when he hit 190 for the whole season, uh, you would have said there isn't a chance that would ever happen. And, but he has um, gotten stronger. His bat speed's increased. And uh, he's gotten a lot of big hits for us. He's having a well of a season. I put a lot of work, too. but. I think everything just clicked after this summer that I had, you know, had a great summer, but I think honestly everything just clicked for me. It was an unexpected uh, bonus to have the performance that he's doing. I mean, he's having a, you know, just an unbelievable season. Just knowing that every guy in front of you, behind you can hit, it's just, it feels, you feel a lot more relaxed. Hit the ball, the ball as hard as I can, and defensively, well, that's just, that's kind of my natural game on that one. I, I actually like left field better than center field because I could get I get to see everything happen in front of me, especially when you have to throw a guy out. Defense is defense. Just catch the ball, throw the ball, make sure you get the guy out. You know, no matter where you're at on the field. Watch the veterans play and learn from that. Keep up and watch, just watch them, watch them, watch them. It's not all about being captain or who's not captain. We just help each other. Like I said, it's just teamwork. <laughs> I'm struggling with anything there. I was helping. They, they're just my brothers. One word, they're my brothers. We stick together and we help each other, but as a team, I think if we keep doing what we've been doing so far, I, I think we'd be in a great position to achieve our dreams. I'm going to play till they tell me I can't play anymore. Whenever that happens, well, who knows. On the next episode of Ball State Baseball Believe, conference play continues. Learn how to steal bases with speedster Matt Eppers. And see how senior pitcher Devin Wilburn has defied the odds in his return to our team.
Ball State Baseball Believe 2015 is a production of Ball State Sports Link, an immersive learning production. Follow our team on Twitter at Ball State BB and catch every episode and feature this season by following at BSU Sports Link. Blooper, bloopers. I wouldn't say it was a modeling career. It's kind of a one-day thing, but I did do a little modeling. He had me in NHL. It was, it was back and forth. Uh, Tiger Woods was about it. Was honestly, it was, it was all about even until UFC. He he uh, he struggled in that. Getting your makeup done is one of the weirdest things I've ever done in my entire life. Uh, I sat in the chair and they just kind of brushed me over and put some powder on me and it was weird. I'll tell you, never do it again. Um, but I did it for a baseball magazine my senior year of high school and uh, it got me some money so I was up for whatever. I remember having to talk Sean off the ledge many nights at like two or three in the morning because he was just freaking out about school and I was like, Sean, you're going to be fine. You still have like a 3.9. You're, you're going to be all right. I was expecting somebody to ask me how to describe Jared. Can I use two words? I was going to say teddy bear. Teddy bear.